Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got one for you today. Not just a great star, but a mega star. Russell Watson, how are you? Oh, thank you. What a build up. We've got to talk about two things firstly before we go any further. Um, this thing on your leg, yeah. um, I guess that's not just for comic effect. No, it's an air cast. Um, I'd like to say that I was skydiving from, you know, I don't know how many thousand feet and then I had an awkward landing. Um, but I just tripped over a tennis ball. You're getting to the age now where it's best you don't do sport. Um, I don't think so. I'm still consider myself quite fit. I'm a pretty good boxer. Um, tennis is good. Got a decent backhand. Um, nice solid forehand. Pretty good at the net. Um, but not good with balls. No, dreadful with balls. In fact, I've had so many accidents with balls that you know I probably should stay away from them. It's one of the main reasons I left the BBC, to be honest with you. How long has this got to be on for? It's meant to be. I've had it on for about two weeks. Um, it's meant to be on for another two weeks. I've got to go back and have another scan on it to make sure everything that's wrong with it is right. I won't bore you with the details. There was about eight different things that were wrong with it. Um, I actually said to the specialist after he'd given me the, the, the prognosis, I said, is there anything that isn't wrong with it? And he says, yeah, you've not broken it. I went, okay. So when anybody asks now, what have you done to it? I say, I've, I've not broken it. And presumably this is meant to stay on 24 hours a day. Yeah, I've seen pictures of you on stage in the last 24 hours and it wasn't on, so you take yeah. it off. And there's no way I'm going on stage with one shiny <laughs> patent shoe and a ski boot on the other foot. <laughs> so each evening at around about sort of 7.20, I can be seen squeezing into this um, black patent shoe um, with this great big shoe horn that's about six foot long because I can't bend down properly because it's the Achilles. So, um, and uh, it's, it's a little bit like um, one of the ugly sisters trying to squeeze into <laughs> Cinderella's glass slipper. You know, it's not quite going to work, but somehow we manage it. And I guess we're not telling the consultant about that because this is meant to remain on whilst ever you stood on it. I think the consultant knows that I'm an idiot. So <laughs> he kind of just goes along with, with whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second thing we need to talk about, facial hair. I notice it's still there. We, we discussed this over a year ago, and I think we both decided it was best to get rid of it. What's happened since? Well, I got rid of it um, for a while, for about a year, <laughs> and, then, um, and then I grew it back. <laughs> and then, true story this, and, and then I got rid of it again, and then um, I grew it back. So I'm kind of at the growing, growing it back stage, and then I'll probably get rid of it again. Is this one of those things they call um, a midlife crisis? No, because if, if it was going through a midlife crisis, it'd probably be the opposite way around, like i.e. I would have had lots of facial <laughs> hair and then shaved it up, off in anticipation of people going, wow, you look amazing without your beard. Right, let's start the interview proper. We always yeah. do this. Let's start with the compliments. You're still amazing. You're still brilliant. You're still selling out. Isn't it remarkable? We've been doing the same interview for something like 300 years. Yeah. Congratulations. It's marvellous what you've achieved and the fact you're still filling these huge, huge theatres. Oh, it's great because... I've done, you know, it's it's coming up to now three years with really without. I mean, we've we've taken a big step back from the recording process because I just wasn't getting along with um, with with the label that that I was at, and really wasn't getting much satisfaction from from the records that I was was making. Um, and so this is this 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 marks kind of like a, this year marks a return to the recording studio where I've given it a lot more thought. And, and consideration than maybe the last the last record was was great fun because you know I was working with um, Mr. Schomburg and Mr. Bublil the writers of of, of Lay Miss but again it, it wasn't approached right by the label and we didn't or I didn't feel that I got what I wanted from from the release of the record so this this kind of marks a return to you know getting back to I think what I do best and that's the mixture of the classical crossover with with the pop repertoire. Um, but what's what a thing, you know, when you, when you talk about um, remarkable, I'm not sure whether it's remarkable, but what has surprised me and what I feel really, really ingratiated about is the fact that, you know, I haven't had a record on the shelves for two and a half years. It'll be three years at Christmas since the release. And so therefore, I've hardly done any television or promotion because, you know, if, if you're not selling anything, there doesn't seem much point in going on the, the, the TVs. Um, and yet we've been, you know, doing great business touring. In fact, the business, if anything, has been better uh, since we've not had any record releases, which kind of contravenes everything that I've been told in the past. 
I think, though, it's down to the respect the public have for you and the fact that you deliver. It's amazing whenever they need a go-to guy to sing live. They come, Why are you laughing? I'm trying to pay you a compliment. No, I, I take it as a compliment, though. But it is remarkable that they have you. And you, you think it's OK, but I sit in theatres week in, week out that are empty. It is tough to sell, sell tickets. Moreover, it's tough to sell a show where you've got to have a large orchestra and there's many costs involved. Yet you're managing to do it and keep it on the road. I mean, against all the odds, you're still here. And I think that's because you made a connection with the audience. I think your story made a connection um, and they care. You can't well, buy that. My career is completely organic. Everything about, you know, the way... There was nothing preordained. Uh, everything kind of, almost, my, right from the very start, you know, right from sort of 1990, when my my singing career began, it was almost like a, an accident, almost like I stumbled into the industry. I never had any aspirations to become a singer or a performer, and and literally just kind of tripped up one night, and next thing I'm singing in the pubs and clubs of the northwest for ten years, and then. I got some incredibly fortunate breaks around 1999 and a culmination of, I think, good luck and being in the right place at, at the right time. And I like to think a bit of talent as well. And and then my, my career kick-started in 2000. The first record became the most successful classical record from a UK artist ever. And and then the you know the, the 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 16 years that followed that has been almost like a roller coaster ride you know where we, we've had these incredible uh, peaks and the, these amazing career highlights and you know like the performance for the Pope John Paul II at the Vatican and the the opening ceremony of the Commonwealth Games all those wonderful things that I, I, I was so fortunate to do but then that's that's been crossed with some of these incredible lows you know the illnesses that that have been well documented the two tumors i had in my skull and it's all kind of made up for a i think you know a real and organic story of an artist that's kind of come from nowhere without initially without any support it was not i remember being amused at seeing one newspaper report in it was it was after the first record had gone to number 1 and someone had put um, Russell Watson overnight success. And I'd done ten years in the clubs. I thought, well, it was a long night that. <laughs> <laughs> I think as well, more than any of the stuff you just talked about, there was something so magical about seeing a normal, nice guy who appeared like one of us, who opened his gob, and then this thing happened. Does it still surprise you when you hear through those speakers what you sound like? Because it's an amazing sound. How do you hear it in your head? I think in the initial stages of my career, it, it was... I think there was a bit of a, a shock element to it all. It was all new and fresh, and I was bumping into, you know, some of the the the, the people that, you know, like for instance, Lionel Rich. You know, I'd, I'd be doing, I was doing a TV campaign for my first record, and I'm bumping into Lionel Richie all over the UK and in the US where we 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 had releases, and that was a, that was all sort of like. This is a bit weird, you know. I used to like listen to the Commodores and Lionel Richie when I was a kid, so that took a, a bit of getting used to, you know, and all the initial things like, as I say, performing for the Pope and the President of the United States and having dinner with the Emperor of Japan, and then, you know, doing a concert for him afterwards, and we, we ended up talking about football. So some of these some of these career moments have been just like, wow, pinch yourself scenarios, but. As the last 16 years have, have progressed, I don't feel so much like the waggy-tailed puppy dog anymore. Uh, somebody quoted recently in, in a press article and, and, and said that the, the godfather of classical crossover. I thought, well, that either means that they think I'm good or old. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully a combination of both. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think I'd take it if I were you. And then we look at the future, which is almost even more exciting because it goes full circle. I remember years and years ago sitting at home about two o'clock in the morning watching Larry King Live, which I, I loved. It's not on anymore. And there you were singing. There was a moment where America was yours. And as you say, you got ill. And then now you're with a new record company that want to sort of rekindle that American yeah. dream. And I think you'll do it because, right. again, that character thing they just love. I've got a group of people, you know, um, around me that really believe in, in me and their focus, you know, because I've got my family working for, for me now. My daughter works in, in the office for us. Uh, my sister's my business manager. 
the new record label that we're involved with with uh, a chap called Bob Rose, who's um, a phenomenal uh, producer. He's worked with everybody from the likes of Roy Orbison to George Harrison, Lennon. I mean, I'm not doing him justice. The the, the list is endless of the people that he's worked with, and he, he's, he's an incredible talent. But he also is one of the few people that I've worked with in the record industry that, to be fair, since the first and second record, where I've really felt this sense of connection and almost like they, that their belief in me is that that you know they 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 think that we can do it again with another have, have another big hit record and and not just do well here in the UK because everybody kind of gets hung up about the UK and getting big hits here but there's a big world out there as well and you know we're interested in the US which we're going to release the record for the first time for me we'll be doing a North American release before we come to the UK with a record so you know from my perspective as an artist that wants to develop an international career it's probably the most excited I've been about my career for a, a really really long time and how fantastic that you've got all that experience and all that nerve built within you to handle going back because when you stand there whether it be the late show or the today show or any of those things uh, that you'll get invited on you've got to have a certain confidence and I guess you're going into it armed as best as you can be well there's no fear now you know I don't fear anything because I've been through some really tough times with you know without wanting to go into too much detail again about the the tumor but you know th that second one nearly ended my life so walking on a stage or singing <laughs> on a tv show doesn't feel like a big deal anymore it's all perspective isn't it i suppose it is perspective and my perspective on on life and everything now is is that i just feel grateful to to be here you know, I, I, I'll be on the stage and I, I get these kind of incredible euphoric feelings, this sensation of just, you know, and I'll just burst out with it. Like most nights when I'm on stage, I'll just burst out and say, you know what, it's good to be alive. And it really is good right. to be alive. And Especially when you consider the alternative. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm a huge advocate of where I am now. <laughs> so you should be. And I think actually this is the venue as we talk in Nottingham, where I saw you after that second tune would come back and we were all nervous. Would you sound the same? Would you be a different person? And I think the reality is you were a different person and you did sound different. There was certainly more meaning to the words you sang. Yeah. And for that, I suppose we should be grateful, A, that you're still here, but actually you became a different and better person from it people have said did, did it change your voice I don't think it changed my voice I think it changed me I think it changed my um, perspective on not just life but the music as well and I think more importantly you know the connection that I have now with the fans because I've you know a lot of a lot of people a lot of the I know a lot of people in the industry I'm not mentioning any names but there's a there's a lot of artists out there that just think they deserve to be there because they're great at what they do and haven't yet clicked on to the fact that actually you don't deserve to be there. You're there because the public buy into you. They like you, they buy your music and they come and watch your concerts. That's why you're there. It's got nothing to do with anything else. And no amount of press or PR press releases will get them to buy a ticket. They either want to or they won't. They either want to come and see you. Too or... many people these days driven by media and too many people driven by, you know, what TV shows, what press they're in and all the rest of it. I've just been happily driving around the United Kingdom singing to thousands of people for the last yeah. two years and absolutely loving every minute of it. Something to be said for it. And of course, since we last spoke, you are now married. Congratulations. How's life? Very good, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's great because, you know, with with what I do, you know, combined the, 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 the you know, the, the touring combined with the family life, it's really good because, you know, the missus looks after me and the kids are with me as well and it's just good and I'm going out doing what I love which is singing. I've got a great record company behind me, you know, my faith is stronger than ever. Um, I thank God that I'm still here and still singing and uh, yeah, life is life is good. I feel very, very lucky. You've got to work hard for it, nothing comes for free. And you know, just what I was saying before about um, you know, like media and everything. There's a place for media. I do believe that, you know, the, the big TVs and everything that there's, you know, like the, the likes of the big Jonathan Ross shows and Alan Carr and all those types of TVs. There's a, there's a place for those and, and it's good. And it's great for artists like me to be able to go on there and chat and perform because it helps us sell our, our wares. But I think, you know, there's, 
there's a lot of people out there that just solely use the media as a tool to build um, status and fame, which actually doesn't really represent anything. Right. Yeah, so you do. You know, you need a good team of people behind you. You need. You do need the promo. Who you trust. And yeah, trust is is crucial because uh, it's so difficult to find somebody to trust in the music industry these days because there uh, aren't many. Well, and I guess for most of them, they want to get in and out quickly. They're not used to an artist like you, who 15 years later is still as popular as you were selling the same venues. I mean, you're not downsizing. If anything, you're getting bigger, which is rare. And I guess for them, they don't quite get that it's about the number one record and then move on to the next. Yeah, yeah. well, we're, you know, again, what we've been doing is is we did, we did a, oh, crikey, how many concerts? I think 90-odd concerts last year nearly 100 shows in total, including all the corporate things that I did. And a lot of the venues we did, you know, were some of the smaller smaller locations, so, you know, maybe seven, 800 seaters. But we were selling them out, and they're in areas where normally, you know, some of the bigger artists wouldn't visit. But um, we go there because, you know, we want everybody to see the show and we want them to be a part of it. Were you humbled last year by the reaction from the public to your marriage and the fact that people wish you so well and the fact that you mentioned the media? I mean, they were obsessed with it. Again, it's touching, isn't it, that people want you to be happy and are thrilled that you are? Yeah, the, the, my fans are really passionate. They're the best fans in the world without question. And, um, you know, I just, well, I, I wouldn't be here without them. So uh, I, I totally appreciate that. And that's why, you know, I, I think it's important the, you know, like the guys waiting outside the door then. Uh, I know a lot of artists who'd find another entrance in because they don't want to go signing autographs and we don't do that. We we look after the people that, that look after us. Is there any way of explaining that feeling when you stood on a stage as big as this? It's a huge sort of Ikea-sized warehouse, the Nottingham Royal Concert Hall. And as you walk out and you hear that roar of applause, yeah. I guess that's what you wake up for in the morning because it means, oh, I'm here. There are different aspects to performance, you know, like, for instance, you know, last night we were in a, a smaller place, there was about six, seven hundred people there in Darlington, but it was still a great night. It was close and intimate and it was a fantastic night. And the same, you know, we did Buxton Opera House, which is only about a thousand seats, but a beautiful, fan fantastic location and a great theatre. Um, Nottingham has one of the best theatres in the UK, as far as I'm concerned, I think underrated a lot of times and, and, and gets missed but it's a fantastic theatre the way it's constructed and the way it almost feels like the audience is literally hanging over the stage I love that connection and that intimacy with my audience it's what I get a massive buzz off you know I know there's a again going back to other people there's a lot of people out there that don't like that sort of so in your face they like to have the lights you know the spotlights blasting in the face so that it's all blacked out and they can't see people because it kind of freaks them out but I actually like to see every face in the audience and particularly if the venue's full it's great to see you know the place packed I love that feeling yeah. it gives me a buzz and you know the biggest adrenaline rush in life for me is walking on a stage as soon as the light hits my face wham you know I'm alive Really, it is amazing that you're living the dream. To have all those stars aligning and to be well is something that you yeah. can't buy. No, it's not. But, you know, it, it it's taken a long time. I've had to kind of almost grow into the, my own skin and made a, a lot of mistakes. And a lot of mistakes, you know, I've made a lot of really bad character judgments as well, you know, with professional people that I've I've had to work with. And then the illness as well, you know. So it's meant that, you know where I might have felt like things were going to be great for a certain period of time. They haven't worked out as great as I thought they would. But now, sort of 16 years down the line, well, it's taken me 16 years to work out how to do it. <laughs> and the, th the, the sad thing is, is that, you know, the, there are a lot of great people out there, there are a lot of great, talented artists that, you know, haven't had the opportunity to have a career that spans such a long time. And they've been, you know, led down the garden path by somebody and their careers are gone and over. And uh, that would have been pretty sad. The DVD's coming out for Christmas. This is going to be amazing because we haven't yeah. seen you on DVD in a long time. No. Well, there was that one DVD, but we don't talk about that because that was on some dodgy website, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Like, maybe it was a different type of evening with Russell Watson, wasn't it? It was, yeah. 
but please. I rather enjoyed it. I only watched a couple of minutes, but that's all we needed. All this talking. DVD, though, what's this one about? <laughs> uh, this this DVD is is basically going to be, you know, like the next the, the the next sort of twelve eighteen months of of what we're going to be performing, you know, from the record. Um, so a lot of stuff from the new record. And then we're going to combine that with with some stuff from you know the past stuff that the fans also like as well, like you know, Ness and Dorma. You know, if if, if there's ever a night where I don't do Ness and Dorma, um, and I say good night, God bless. That's it. The end of the show. You can guarantee that all you'll hear being shouted from the audience is Ness and Dorma in that mm. voice. <laughs> yeah, usually. Yeah, always. Give them what last they night, want. Last, last night in. Um, Doncaster and uh, I didn't do Ness and Dorma and I wasn't planning to do it because we did like a tribute to St George's Day so I did Jerusalem and Abide With Me Land of Hope and Glory all that they're all up waving their hands it was fantastic and then I says okay cheers good night God bless and there's like 50 people Ness and Dorma <laughs> Ness and Dorma <laughs> Ness and Dorma <laughs> mm, do we have to do you get bored singing or do you appreciate the fact that we just love to hear you sing it and that's sort of your gift to us? No, it's just, it's not easy to sing, you know, right. least of all at the end of the night when you're knackered after giving it 110% on a stage. Why not start the show three or four minutes early and do it then? We wouldn't mind. Well, there's nowhere to go. It's like kind of getting on a roller coaster, going down the big dip and then, you know, and then you just got a few little bumps and turns before the, the you know, it, before it ends. It's a shame, isn't it? you got to leave the big drop right till the end, don't you? <laughs> Story of my career. Congratulations on everything I can't wait to see you again tonight it is remarkable I wish you could see you as we see you because you're such a phenomenal uh, achievement of an artist to still be here no, especially when you, know, you consider what you've been through I know but you can't you, you can't say that about you know I'm not going to get on a radio station or, or, or on a, a press interview and I agree. You can't sit here and say I'm marvellous, but at the same time, I wish I believed that you understood how amazing you are. That's all I'm I, saying. I was watching a, a, a I was watching something the other night and I'm not again I'm not going to say who but somebody was on TV and they said that they were humble. I'm humble. <laughs> you can't say that about yourself. Can you? You can't say you're humble. Someone can say it about you. Right. <laughs> but you can't go I am humble. Cuz that means you're not, doesn't it? I really do think I'm incredibly humble. I think I'm the most humble person that I know. <laughs> I really do. I think that should be the title of your next CD. Humble. Humble. Yes. <laughs> I think it'd be marvellous. Like you could sing songs like I'm Amazing and I'm Tremendous, those type yes, of songs. Yes, uh, I Love Me, Who Do You Love? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that classic. I Don't Need You Here Because I Love Me More. Songs like that. Love, love, love me. <laughs> <laughs> and what about the physicality stuff? Are we still Mr. Delicious? Because we know the ladies like you and with the DVD, will we be yeah. pumping iron and things? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I've been pumping iron like crazy, but uh, the, the last two weeks have sort of put a stop to that. So I've lost a little bit of muscle mass, but thankfully I'm not putting fat on because she's got me eating... Lettuce you know, leaves. Well, not lettuce leaves, but like homemade vegetable soups and pasta dishes. There's that always I'm, someone to ruin the party, isn't there? A vegetarian or something in the corner shoving a samosa in your face. Uh, or I'm a Sagittarian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm Capricorn. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Russell Watson, you are still one of our greatest artists in history ever. I wish you all the best with the next year. It's going to be fantastic to see what happens in America because that's really the dream, isn't it? If you can make yeah, it there, well, you can make it anywhere. That's the, and we'll always love you regardless. That's the dream is, is, is getting out to the United States and also Europe, you know, but not you know not forgetting about the UK you know I'd, I'd love to have another big hit record here in the UK and you're going to have on when's it out it will be coming out around the Christmas period so sort of November-ish well I thought Christmas would be around then funnily enough I didn't think you meant sort of July August when you said Christmas but I'll leave it with you thank you you're, you're so intelligent you just made me look so stupid <laughs> Russell Watson I love you thank you <laughs> you're welcome